Hi, I'm James. And I'm Dan. And today we're doing our three-part series on servicing the 1998 GQ TD42. So again, just check the drain plug. Welcome back to part two. Today we're going to service the gearbox and transfer case in James's GQ. Okay, so we're under the GQ, we're just about to drop the gearbox oil and uh, then we'll look at filling it back up again. So Dan, you should talk about why the bolts are so tight. This one was loose. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> That's probably why it was leaking. So the reason these threads are, um, if you're used to servicing engines and that, you'd find these threads seem really tight, is because they're not a, uh, they're not done up to a face like a sump plug is, they're a tapered thread. So to seal they have to be done up tight. And with stuff like your diffs, not so much these because they've been serviced recently, but generally they go a lot of Ks between um, having the oil changed. So yeah, you'll quite often find that the plugs are very tight. Any swarf? Oh look, just from James flat shifting. No, I don't grind gears. Like Grinding gears, match. stinking beers, man. I grind, I fucking road match. <laughs> road match. Okay, so once again, pretty much the same as the diff uh, drain plugs. These have a magnet on them, so you can use that to see what sort of wear you're getting in your gearbox. This isn't uh, isn't ideal, but it's not horrible. Um, the car does get a fairly hard drive occasionally. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much what you'd expect out of um, something like this. If as long as you don't have any sort of larger chunks on there, then I wouldn't be uh, too concerned about it. Clarify what a large chunk is, Dan. When your whole second gear drops out of the sump plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I no shit. I pulled a I pulled a drain plug out of a truck diff, and uh, about half a liter of oil came out. They carry about 15, and then it stopped. It just started dribbling. It's like, oh, that's weird. Sort of had a look. There's there's a, a corner of a gear off the crown wheel sitting in the drain plug. Had to poke it with a screwdriver and then the oil started coming out again. Okay, that one that one needed a rebuild. Okay, so while the gearbox is draining, we're going to go ahead and drain the transfer case as well. The uh, drain plug for that's just right here on the front bottom of the transfer case and the filler is around on the rear. We'll show you when we come to that. Doubt this has been out for a while. Actually, actually, hold on just a cotton picking minute. Oh, wow, yeah. what do you call this? Uh, this is called a do as I say and not as I do. Uh, this is not the recommended method, but as you can see, it works. And that's the transfer case draining. Okay, so while we got the oil draining from the gearbox and transfer case, we thought, why not go through a few of the comments on our uh, wastegate disconnect video and, um, yeah, get a bit of a reply going to you guys. What about uh, Darren Vauxhall, who says, forklift engine filth. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I don't know if you've ever seen anyone drive a forklift, Darren. They don't get baby. Yep. They are pretty much one of the most abused engines you see getting around. And they, so get, they get thrashed. They're, they've started from like, like what, 7 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon and they've just driven all day, come on stop, for years. I think uh, if something can survive living a in a forklift, <laughs> it can pretty much survive James. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, the comment about 12 mil pumps is ridiculous and super inaccurate. I know a lot of people are having issues with your comment about the 12 mil pumps and how it's going to wreck the motor. Um, I don't think many of them know that this isn't a silver top, this is a black top, which is a factory aspirated yeah. uh, TD42. They, we're already pushing the limits with this motor. <laughs> basically, it yeah, it's already... Uh, at its limit. <laughs> it's, it's way past it. <laughs> <laughs> It surprises us every time it doesn't die. How's that? It's exactly so we're trying right. not to push it any further. If James doesn't want to throw more money at something that's um, already, already at its limit. past the point. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll put something that's got a much more potential, like a 6BT Cummins. A lot of comments on here about uh, boost surge and um, the fact that this is a turbo diesel, not a petrol. Um, boost surge is still a thing. 
I agree with uh, a few of you people. It is nowhere near as bad as in a um, in a turbo petrol or a turbo diesel with a throttle body, but it does still exist. Nowhere near as major, but still a factor. Um, a good one here from Paddy Henderson who says, weld some extra thread on the old twisty boy and send her home please. I like your opinion. <laughs> um, wise words. Um, a lot of people saying they disconnected their wastegate as well. Um, Ryan Clark, best thing I ever did was disconnecting the wastegate on my silver top TD42. Yeah, that's another thing. Boost doesn't always mean more power. Mm. Like, like if you actually went and got your car tuned properly by a professional, they would probably take the boost down and you probably get a performance increase. Yeah. Because we're not professional tuners, mm. we're just going to leave it the way it is from factory because it's, they know more than us. So, yeah. Uh, this fuel pump is as far as it can go for a 10 mil pump. It's running out of fuel to keep up with the boost. I, well, I, so. did, I did consider getting an 11 mil pump off a GU silver top, but the, even then that's just Black way top. too expensive. These silver black top. tops have Jeez. lighter pistons, rods, than a silver top. Oh really? Yeah. And I think a smaller a gudgeon pin. Um, I don't quote me on that, but I'm fairly sure they have a smaller gudgeon pin in the top end. The black tops compared to the silver tops, so they're not overly. And the pistons are lighter as well. Yeah, they're not overly uh, uh, stronger crank though. Yeah, the crank overly. is stronger. Apparently, yeah. the crank is stronger. I don't know. Maybe is that just because no one's got game enough to put that much boost into it? <laughs> and they, and they just because, say they're stronger because the pistons give in before the crank. That's right. And, and everyone just says the crank's stronger because the pistons break first. Yeah, that's pretty right. much. So it's the same crank. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, some people saying that at that sort of pressure, the boost is pushing the wastegate flap open, even with the actuator disconnected. Yeah. Um, there's no chance of that with the boost level we're getting up to. Yeah, because um, if it's a, if, if on the uh, exhaust manifold side, the boost is actually like half of what it is on the intake side. Because if, if you think about it logically, if you had the same pressure on both sides, there'd be no point in running boost into your motor. Because you'd have it would just be like yeah, it would be, go, go backwards. You must leave it NA. Yeah. So there's um. There's, there's, yeah, there's, like we're running 20, when he had the gate disconnected, it was getting 23 pound in the intake. There was, by sure, no way there was 23 pound in the exhaust side. Now, these turbos are, are factory rated to run up to 30 pound on that exact same actuator and gate that's on there. So, um, G-Turbo will actually tell you, you can put a boost T or a bleed valve, whatever you want to call it, in that line to the actuator and dial it up to 30 pound if you want to. Um, obviously we're running out of fuel before we even get there, so it's not really an issue. If you did have something with a 12 mil pump on it, like a silver top or yep. a silver top with an 11 mil pump even, you could probably get to 30 pound if you wanted to run a um, run a bleed valve in the line. But again, like if you look at a lot of like people, like the people that do that, they put like 50 pound, 40 pound into their, into their GUs and like stuff like that. You find if you take it to a professional dyno, they would turn that down because it's it's not like I think like the optimal fuel ratio for it is like twenty to one. Yeah, they um like, they it's all good to run that much boost and you can get the fuel to keep up with it, but the longevity of your motor isn't going to be good. If you're going to use something as an actual four wheel drive or touring rig, fair enough. If you want to go drag race it or bloody desert race it and you want to okay. rebuild the thing, sure. If, like you've an got, Abu if, if you're if you're building it for that, then go ahead. We love it. But um, <coughs> if you want to get any sort of longevity or... Yeah, you got to remember, this is my daily driver. This is what I do. Yeah. Every, this is I drive this every single day. This, yeah. is where, this is how I get around this car. I haven't yeah. got another car to drive. Um, so, yeah. If you want to get that sort of longevity and reliability out of it, then you can't go crazy with the boost. Um, I know there are people running much higher boost pressure in TD42s. Yeah, than us. Um, a lot, like double us. But, yeah, again... How far can you push these things? Um, I think sort of ideally if you were going to set this up as a touring rig you could probably run 20 pound like this yeah. with a boost compensated pump. Yeah, that would be ideal. If you had a boost compensated pump then you get even you get really good fuel economy and then it won't be like... You could actually keep it in tune yeah. right through the rev range. And it won't like just dump fuel in it low with no air and just yeah. roll cold. Yeah. It'll be like... It'll be efficient and like environmentally friendly. <laughs> and just, there was a lot of... Um, <laughs> Comments, people were very critical of James's yeah. pronunciation of the uh, yeah, they did not VT6 like six motor. Yeah, so six, 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 we've got, we've got, a lot lot of, uh, got a lot of uh, sort of funny and or negative comments here about uh, the 6BT <laughs> or BT6 situation. Um, it is 6BT, I'm pretty sure. 
It is six but everyone knows you all know what I was talking about. So the message was the, <laughs> the message was transferred. Exactly. So I would say that was good communication. The message got through. The message got through. So you understood. So it was communicated well. Okay. So uh, we've had a bit of a read through all the comments on the last video there. I think by now the transfer case and gearbox should be finished draining. If you guys have got any more questions for us, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Okay, so that's the transfer case and gearbox drained. We're going to go ahead, chuck the plug back in the transfer case and fill that up to start with, and then we'll move on to the gearbox. Can uh, someone bring me another couple of bags of oil? There we go. Cheers. Once again, we're going to fill up the transfer case using uh, one of these New Line Easy Squeeze containers, um, 75W85. Okay, so that's the transfer case filled back up. Just gonna put the filler plug back in and we're done. All right, transfer case is done. Um, we're just gonna put the drain plug back in the gearbox and then top that back up. Now we're taking out the filler plug in the gearbox, which is up on the driver's side here. We'll top it back up, put the plug back in and we'll be done. Okay, so the gearbox in these takes the same oil as the transfer case. I'm going to go ahead and fill that back up. Alright, that's the gearbox top back up again, and the plug's tight. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for under here. So that was part two of servicing the transfer case and gearbox. Catch us in part three. We're going to service the engine oil. Try not to wear too much of this. Fuel filter. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Air filter. Oh, God. Had some water go through it. And the radiator. Yellow banana's a big fan, too. Yellow banana comments on all the videos. Shout out to Yellow banana. I'll do a shout out to Yellow banana. Shout out to. <laughs> I'm not doing shout outs. Shout out to Yellow Banana for commenting on all the videos.